So, Diablo 4 in-game video. Let's watch it. This is my first time watching it, and I'm gonna see uh, exactly what they drop on us. Getting this game into players' hands, letting them experience this massive world. The main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. As a player continues to advance through the story and into the end game, they'll unlock a ton of brand new activities that provide meaningful progression, no matter their play style. Players will be able to keep progressing in the narrative of the game. Alongside that, the whole team has worked on crafting a variety of different experiences players can pursue. We're going to have an entire world of sanctuary for our players to offer. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. After the player has finished the campaign, there's a lot more game to go and participate in. Girl's got the some teeth. Access to a special, what we call capstone dungeon that they have to complete. Once they're able to finish this capstone dungeon, they're going to gain access to the first world tier. As you complete the world tier, it will open up the opportunity for you to go into your next world tier. That involves unlocking powerful loot, new items, and more advantages for your player to have a better opportunity to end the game. Whether you're a fan of dungeons, PvP, or just roaming around the world, there's a way to continue your Diablo adventure long after hitting max level. As your character continues to grow in power, you'll start with the skill tree and expand out into the Paragon system. A lot of the choices the players make are grounded on skills themselves and the fantasies associated with those skills. The Paragon board is a place where we allow you to have a lot more depth, a lot more customization, many more options as you go. You can rotate the board so you can choose a different path if you're like, I want to do more strength-based things, or I want these particular boons or glyphs. You can chart your path through it and they're really a way for you things like boards so you can choose a different path if you're like i want to do more strength based things or i want these so oh oop, 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 oop. they're really a way for you to keep it going back there real quick path if you're like i want to do more strength so okay so they're at the intersection here so what's the refund like how can we refund these points because there has to be a way otherwise that's that's the end of the character if you mess up, right? That is actually the end of the character. So there needs to be a way to respec. Um, I, you're at the intersection right there at the bottom. You're kind of where it progresses over to the next one here. So apparently there's a gold cost respec that's very expensive for this. I'm just reading now. Okay. These particular boons or glyphs, you can chart your path through it and they're really a way to Normal node, magic node. Your character and making it uniquely yours. Similar to the Paragon boards is the Codex of Power. It's an in-game system that holds the aspects related to the character. You are able to complete a dungeon and they will have a chance to drop an aspect that you can pick up. And what this allows players to do is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful, turn them into legendary items. It's really special to discover what kind of playstyle really means the most to you. That's not really true. You don't turn an item right into a legendary. Yeah, it changes color, but it doesn't have four stats. Dungeons in particular are really close to my heart. Nightmare Dungeons are going to give the players the opportunity to experience a dungeon that they might have already experienced in their past playthroughs. They'll enter the dungeon with a found sigil that alters the playstyle and the intensity of the dungeon. They're more difficult and they have additional objectives and then they also have affixes which add a degree of difficulty for you and your group to work through. One of my favorite affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons is actually called Hellgate. Occasionally, these portals will open up throughout the area that will just pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to also be dealing with while you're trying to handle everything else inside the dungeon. There's over 120 dungeons to play through and find in Diablo 4, and any one of them can become a Nightmare Dungeon by finding a Nightmare Sigil and then using it to activate the nightmare version of that dungeon space. Everything's a little darker, everything's more difficult. It's going to add a little bit of a twist of flavor on your particular dungeon. See, my, my problem here is we were actually just speaking about this. We're talking about the nightmare keys and stuff. Cool system. And then using it to activate the nightmare version. My problem is you are well past the normal content. You are well into the nightmare dungeon farming. Is it going to be scaled to the point where you you're you're out of keys? What do you do if you're out of keys? Can I, you're relying on friends to use their keys to help you in? Can you buy them from other players? Can you obtain them easier by buying them off the auction house to continue your grind? Or are you going jumping all the way back? You might be on nightmare tier fifty, and you're jumping all the way back to the beginning to farm more keys. That's a potential problem. The force of hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of Sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld that we experience. And as the players are going into Helltide areas, 
they're gonna find even more powerful monsters. And by killing them, they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase these big rewards are available at these caches that are found literally throughout Helltide areas. The sky darkens and the rivers run red, meteors fall from the sky, and the monsters get harder. We really want to create new experiences for the players. There's one I really like called Whispers of the Dead, which you get from the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is grim and a little gruesome, but it's also something mystically haunting and kind of beautiful. The tree has a little bit of a grudge against our players, and it's for that one. to go serve its needs. So you're going to go serve these bounties, gather different rewards, different items, and bring them back to the tree in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful. Maybe you're going to go up to the Fractured Peaks and take out some werewolves that are rampaging in the town. They're contained activities that you can do alone or in a group. We really wanted to create variety. Wait a minute, that almost sounds like daily quest. We'd like for them to go serve its needs. So you're going to go serve these bounties, gather different rewards, different items, and bring them back to the tree in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful. Maybe you'll go Those are daily quests without the word daily thrown onto it. I feel like daily quests have become like a negative term. Like it's a term that people hear and they just, that sounds like crap. I have, I have homework to do every day. That's what that sounds like. Because it might not be like limited. It might not be limited in gather different rewards different like items. how many you can do a day in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful. but it might be randomized and, take out and you're constantly going to the tree to get the next quest the next quest the next quest it's essentially limitless quests it almost sounds like variety for people to that's fine that's fine in an arpg because it's there's not like it's not like an mmo where like you have to go to this raid to get this piece of gear you can't get this this piece of gear from this this way in this dungeon and this raid you have to go to this raid it's not like that in ARPG because the loot can kind of drop. You can obtain upgrades from anywhere, really, right? As long as it's not like, hey, you have to get your set from this tree. Like, the set you want, it has to come from this tree. And if that is the case, you are forcing yeah, players into essentially like farming it. daily quests. As long as that's not, like, forced onto players, you want to do Nightmare Dungeons, that's fine. As long as that's how it is. If it starts being like, oh, you have to do this to get this piece of specific gear, that's a problem. I don't want to see that. ...that we call the Fields of Hatred, where Lilith's presence in Sanctuary has begun to seep through and manifest these poisonous areas throughout the world. When players go to these regions, they get to engage in player versus player conflict. These offer opportunities for the player to collect shards. But there is a little bit of a catch. In order to get these shards back to town, you will need to purify them. Other players will definitely know that you're attempting to purify your shards. So you'd better be prepared to fight if you're going to be playing any PvP and be prepared that you might lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got the purified shards, they can take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them, and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. It's a place for people who really love PvP and want to still get they can take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them, and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and cosmetic items and rewards. Like interesting cosmetic items, a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items, a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items, a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. Okay, cosmetic starts with a C, not an H, and that sounds like shit. To still get loot and still increase their character's power, if that's the way they want. She just contradicted everything that guy just said. They said two totally different things. You notice that? Let's go back. Buy towns to sell them and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. Cosmetic items and rewards. It's a place for people. Cosmetic items and rewards. It's a place for people who really love PvP and want to still get loot and still increase their character's power. If that's the way they want to play, they can. That is completely contradictory to, they're both saying two different things. One, he says you only get cosmetics. She says you can increase your character's power. That is not cosmetics. And one thing I noticed here, when he buys these gloves, yeah, cosmetic. When he buys these gloves, if you take a look here, he does get some blue gloves and it says, bolting striders, hand wraps of discharging. Now, to me, that's an item with stats on it. Bolting Strider's hand wraps of discharging. It's got a suffix and an affix. That is a usable item. That's not a co that's not a cosmetic. A 
be playing any PvP and be prepared One more time. lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got the purified shards, they can take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them, and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. It's a place for people who really love PvP and want to still get loot and still increase their character's power. If that seems like she's the right, play, she's can. right. I hope that's a way to still get the beginning. One of the things we're really focused on is creating a living, breathing set of updates for players to engage with after the game has gone live. It's really just going to be a way to keep coming back and experiencing more Diablo 4 in fresh ways. We're really eager to hear all of your experiences and just enjoy the entire story with you all. All right, so that's the end of it cool cinematics so and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards so cosmetic items and rewards okay yeah i get i get it i get it but like that's so poorly worded though because cosmetic items and rewards okay so the rewards would indicate it's not a cosmetic so okay all right place for makes sense really love so it seems like you really could progress and, and get stronger through pvp very cool the one thing that uh, is still up in the air is, do you lose your hardcore character in PvP? There is one website in the world that says you do, and hundreds that say you do not lose your character if you die in PvP while playing hardcore. Still don't know for sure. Uh, sounds like we need to tweet at Blizzard and find out. But uh, I'm interested to find out and see how it, uh, how it turns out. But 